All right. Hey, everybody. This is Coach Mentorship Call number two for January. I'm super excited to see you guys all here. I hope you had a great weekend. I, for one, was in like immense pain last night after yesterday's autumn workout. Oh my God. And then we went shoveling on the rink and like we had to shovel it two times because it kept snowing. So, like, I was literally in so much pain yesterday. I had two recovers and I did that stretch workout three times. <laughs> Anyways, so that's just a little bit about where I'm at right now. But um, super pumped to talk to all of you guys and connect and chat a little bit about coach mentorship. So I know some of you guys are kind of coming in um, throughout the month because we have a lot of new coaches joining in right now. So if perhaps you missed last week, um, you can scroll up in the group and check out the, the group that we, the call that we did last week and start going through all of the um, landing pages documents for like the part one, part two, part three, part four of all the training. Um, today, we're gonna talk a little bit about inviting, about social media, about being like having a business online, and we're going to talk a little bit about blog groups. So I'm really excited to connect with you guys. As always, like this is a super safe place. We are here for you. If you feel as though your questions are not being answered, please ask them. If there's something burning on your mind that you are like really unsure about, please put it in the chat. Drop the question here. This is your time. This is your opportunity to get the answers and like clarification that you need to run your business. So. We're gonna start off today talking a little bit about inviting. And I know for me, that was the scariest thing, other than putting myself out there on social media. The second scariest thing was actually asking people to do this with me. And the last thing I wanted to do was feel like I was um, like cold calling or that I was like making my friends and family like purchase stuff from me. So um, the way that I found inviting, I like ultimately, made it really clear for myself so that I felt really good about it. And the better I felt, honestly, the better I feel about the programs, the better I feel about the products, the easier it is for me to ask other people to do them with me. So first things first, if you aren't totally immersed in the program and you aren't totally going for it with the product, it's going to be hard to invite people to do that with you. So if you're not drinking Shakeology, I can guarantee you it's gonna feel uncomfortable to be like, hey, would you wanna get Shakeology too? Because you're gonna be like, well, I, like, I don't even know, right? So my biggest thing is to recommend is that you gotta make sure you're diving into a program, make sure you're trying the products so that you can speak to them. Because what we do is we share, we don't sell, right? When it comes to inviting, it's funny, I was talking to Celia, I don't know if she's on the call today, um, last week, and she's like, I just don't want to be cold calling people, I don't want to be like out of the blue, be like, come do this with me, and I was like, then don't, that is not what this is about. What you're going to do is you're going to share your journey so much on social media that you're going to naturally start talking to people who are watching and engaging. You're also going to share other things so that you can start having conversations with people, and then naturally it comes up. And the, honestly, the inviting is you actually saying, hey, would you want to do this with me? Or, hey, would you, like, do you work out at home too? What are you doing right now? Hey, do you want to work out with me? Like, it, it can be that simple and that straightforward. I know at the beginning when I was asking my friends to do this with me, I literally was, like, texting them because that's how I talk to my friends. So think about the, the, the format in which you talk to your friends. Maybe it's text. Maybe it's Facebook Messenger. Like, whatever you normally talk to them in still talk to them in that way um, and talk to them like you don't really talk like this doesn't have to be a scary thing right I would say hey I'm doing this new at home workout program it's crazy want to do it with me we can be miserable together and that's all I'd said and they would be like haha all right what is it what are we doing you know like it doesn't need to be like please don't word vomit this long massive message because that is like it's it's, it's turn off it's too much just be yourself just be normal Think about how much you love these programs and how much you want other people to do them with you, okay? You haven't necessarily built up yet the credibility to be like, I'm going to coach you. Instead, you've built up that credibility with that friend to say, hey, let's do this together and we can go through it together. In the training, we talk a little bit about your dirt list and writing out all the people um, that would ultimately buy dirt from you, right? Like these are your close friends and family who you can say, hey, do this with me, you're doing this program with me. Those are the people that maybe you wanna go to first because you feel more comfortable to going to them. Like I know for my mom or my sisters, it was like, hey, we're doing this, you're doing it, we're all doing it together, and there was no questions asked. Sometimes those people are gonna be the people that are like, uh, no, I'm not doing that with you. And that's okay, because at the end of the day, fitness is personal. And not everybody is going to love the same fitness that you love, right? So be confident in what you have to offer. Be confident that it's something that you love and you will find those other people who will love it too. 
ultimately, this business and inviting people is all about your relationships with people and how you connect with people. So like on social media, on text, on, in person, I mean, I'm not seeing anybody in person right now, but in genuine, general, generally, how you talk to people, how you connect with people, it's the same way as how you're going to invite them to do this with you. Just be a real human, be natural about it, and don't feel, try not to feel self-conscious, all right? This isn't about you making an extra $50 or meeting success club. It's about you finding people who could benefit in the same way that you have benefited too. So um, maybe, well, I just wanna look at my notes here. Maybe, um, maybe somebody isn't ready to join you yet. Maybe they're at a place in their life where this is like the last thing they're thinking about. Then that's cool. Maybe that's not somebody you're gonna invite, but you're still gonna stay in contact with them. You're still gonna be in touch with them. And eventually maybe you are going to help them with their health and fitness. Um, what I said earlier about how you're gonna ask people to do it with you, you guys aren't the experts. We aren't the experts on these programs. We aren't the trainer who built the programs. We aren't the um, registered dietitian who put together the nutrition program. So don't feel as though you have to be the expert to invite somebody to do this with you. You're not. You're not an expert. I'm not an expert. What you are is going to be an amazing cheerleader. You're going to be an amazing support system. You're going to be amazing accountability. And you are committed to this program just like they will be. And together, you're going to go through it together. So be confident that you don't need to be the expert. You don't need to know all the red containers and yellow containers and green containers. You can look those up and together you guys can find these solutions, right? So be comfortable to ask people to do this with you because you're genuinely doing it together. And that's the, that's the key part. You can ask people to join you without being the expert. Make sure that your invites are straight to the point and simple and like not the word vomit. And then when somebody says, they're, yeah, sure, I'm interested. Tell me a little bit about more about it you don't need to then word vomit because you will turn somebody off. We have landing pages available if you want to use those where it's just like a page of information um, and we can drop those in the chat maybe after this call or court if you want to drop those in the chat now so people have them. Um, but otherwise, it's you talking about your experience and keeping it as short and condensed as possible so you don't lose them. Um, maybe even asking them some questions about what they're doing right now or what's been working for them or what kind of fitness they normally like to do or maybe during the pandemic, what have you, what have you been doing? Like have an open two-way conversation so it's not you just dumping a bunch of information and then being like, whoa, that's more than I bargained for, okay? Have a dialogue, ask a lot of questions and then give them information as you go. Uh, this is one thing that for me, when I'm inviting, I always want to make sure I'm inviting them to something specific. And the more I have a plan laid out, the more confident I feel in my invite. So when I'm inviting somebody, I'm not just saying, um, you know, I, I do, I just say, do you want to work out with me? And then if they say yes, then I have a something specific to go to. I say, awesome. We have a new group starting on Monday. Everybody's doing this program. This is what it's about. But if you don't have a plan, then it's like, oh, God, what, what am I going to do now? So my best advice, guys, is to figure out your next plan. Maybe you're going to start a group and it's going to start in two weeks. Pick a date. Pick a date that you want to start. And then you can start inviting people to that group. And you can say, hey, me and so-and-so are doing this. Do you want to do it with us? I have two other women doing it with us. Do you want to do it with us? What I recommend, because I know that people um, sometimes look at our Facebook group or look at the other communities with all these big like graphics and branding and stuff, it doesn't need to be that fancy. It doesn't need to be that elaborate, especially at the beginning. What's so cool now is that Beachbody has created a platform for us to use and for new coaches, it's so easy to get started. So what I'm even do, what I'm doing, I know Courtney and I know a lot of the coaches now are really transitioning from Facebook to bod groups. So Bog Groups is the platform attached to Beachbody On Demand, and it's a way of having like a group together doing the program. It's very similar format looking to like a feed on Facebook, um, but you can add your clients in there, even if you had two clients, and the, together the three of you would go through the program, and it's literally, it's connected right to Beachbody On Demand. So after your workout, you can log onto the app, and it'll say track your workout, the workout you just did, you put your picture, you add it to the feed, all, everybody is there together. You don't need to have a big banner or graphic. They provide all of that for you. It's super easy to get started. All you have to do is do it on your computer or laptop, like you can't do this part on the app. You go to beachbodyondemand.com, and you'll see bod groups at the top. 
And as a coach, you can create a new bot group. And there's literally like four or five steps to go through it. And then you've created a bot group and you just need to invite. There's a button that says invite and you can invite your people to it. And then on the start date of your program, you'll all start being in there together. I really recommend you guys thinking maybe, maybe I mean, today's Sunday. So maybe a week Monday or two weeks Monday, whatever you're comfortable with, plan to have your squad group start and invite some people to do it with you. And maybe you just stick to something that's three weeks so you get a, get a feel for it um, and just go for it. I said this last week, you can't sit in training mode forever. And in fact, in this business, it is you learn way more by doing than by sitting here and listening to me talk. So after the call, I really write this down, open a blog group. That is your number one thing to do. Before you invite anybody, before you open, like even put yourself out there on social media, open a blog group because now you have something to invite to. And now when you go and talk to people about it, you're like, yeah, I have this blog group. We're going to do it together. We're starting on this date. You should join us. And, you're, and I'll, like, this is the number one thing I want to say about inviting, guys. Your energy is what speaks. The more excited you, you actually are about this, the more people will feel that. The more people will feel your energy and, and it will be more attracting. So uh, like, like the more excited you are about this, the more energized and passionate you are, the more that that will exude and the more other people will feel that. So friggin' get excited about your bar group. Honestly, get excited about your bar group and invite some people to it. Um, Corey, you ready? I'm gonna pass it over to you. Um, I was just, you know, Aaron's like, oh, drop this link or like do this or da 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 da. And I just wanted to, you know, just give you guys a little piece of advice in terms of um, organizing yourself as you get going. Cause I know that there can be a lot of info. Um, and I mentioned this in the chat, but I hope that you guys have started in your notes section and on the, your phone and your albums, just saving all this stuff. So I just dropped four landing pages in the chat. Go to your notes section on your phone, create a note that says landing pages and put those four links in and put a title on top of it. So one of them is just a general BOD invite. That means an invite to any program. And then there are three more program specific ones that I dropped there. So now you have that. Then your next note could be like my welcome email. So someone actually joined you. What the heck are you going to say? A quick little thing, right? So just keep those all in your note section and that's going to continue to evolve. You're going to continue to make changes to it, but at least you have that there. This doesn't need to be like a big complicated system, but if you start saving the work that you do, instead of writing a new welcome email every single time, you're going to see how seamless this business can be. Um, and then one other little tip about to, uh, BOD groups is, um, it's really cool for your customers to see, be able to see what groups you have going on. So when they log in to Beachbody On Demand for the very first time, they can see like your coach has this group. So just on top of what Aaron said to go and create your first group, like it's so important. Like you're now a coach, you're not a challenger anymore. If you are here, you're not just a challenger, you are a coach. So open a group, even if it's just for a couple ladies of accountability. Um, Okay, I am mostly going to talk about social media, and um, I'm excited to talk about social media. It is your new business tool. You should be so grateful that we have social media, because starting a business without social media is a lot more work. It's a lot more work and a lot more money to advertise a brand new business um, without social media. So you have this completely free platform to now advertise your business and build momentum with your business, build trust, um, you know, add a viewership, like an audience. So I want you to sort of flip your mindset into like, if, cause I know that there's going to be people feeling like this, like, I don't know what to post. Like nobody, why would anyone care about me? Like people are probably rolling their eyes about me, like all the, all the things. And because I know that it can be really intimidating flip your mindset. You are a CEO. You just started a business and this is your free platform. If people don't want to watch you, they don't need to watch you. And I promise that nobody is thinking about you and your new fitness uh, business as much as you think they are. I promise you that. 
and you are more than likely inspiring someone than them judging you. Like even in my business over the course of three years, like in the beginning, I felt like everyone was judging me. But honestly, it was like, that was what I was, that's what I thought people were doing. Like there weren't a lot of people sitting at home judging my new business venture or my mission to get healthy and fit, right? So take a step back and just see this as a new business tool that is completely free um, that you're going to try to get better at because the only way you're going to get better at social media is by being on social media, by using the platform, by playing around with all the different tools in your stories um, and putting yourself out there. Um, I hope by now uh, most of you guys have done a coming out post. We talked about it last week. If you haven't, it's time to roll, ladies. It's time to do it because you're only, you're just sitting in training mode. You're taking in all the things and you're psyching yourself out if you haven't started to share your journey and if you haven't been a little bit more upfront about what you're doing. Um, I will never forget like a month and a half into me sharing on social media, one of my best friends said to me, she's like, so are you a beach body coach? And I was like, oh my God, like if my best friend doesn't even know, like no one knows, you know? And I thought I was just like, be, I don't know. I don't know what I thought I was doing, but I wasn't being clear. And again, that doesn't mean you need to say I'm a beach body coach, but people need to know that there's a way to join you. People need to know that you have an offering, that you have a group starting, that anything, that there's a way for them to participate, that you're not just doing this to share your journey. Um, consistency is now your job. There are a couple different types of coaches that start. There are the ones, and again, this is going to depend if you are just doing this as a hobby, then this might not apply to you as much. But if you want to build a business, and even if you're the person that's like, I'm going to see how it goes, but like deep down in your heart, you know, like, I'd love to kill this. It's time to be consistent. And it's time to show up every single freaking day with no excuses. Um, you know, if you have COVID, you're showing up. If something really terrible happens in your life, you're showing up. Like, because your new business is about sharing your own personal journey with these programs and products. And honestly, I'll tell you that these programs and products are going to get you through a lot of different things in your life. So when something happens in your life, it's not time to like, mm, I need to take a break. It's time to lean in and it's time to show up. Um, this is really where the excuses come out, I think, with a lot of new coaches. And we are here to remind you again, just like we did in the first call, like, there's no stories in this. This is your business and you now get to treat it how you like. But the entire goal of you showing up on social media is for the people watching you to know, like, and trust you. So you have a leg up right now, most of you, that everyone following you pretty much knows you already, right? They probably even like you already, but they don't trust you in the space of fitness. They don't see the value in why they should join you. You don't all of a sudden have credibility and have the best solution for them, right? Like they don't trust that because they haven't seen that. So while you can send your super short, concise invite, just like Aaron described to your closest friends that they might jump on the bus right away, a lot of your war market after you send that invite is ready to start watching. They're like, Hmm, I don't really know what to say to her. They might even ghost you, which can be hurtful if you feel like you know this person and then they just don't even respond to you. I want to remind you, it's not about you. They don't know what to say. They're not ready to commit. They're unsure. They're going to start watching. I remember thinking early on in my journey, like, this, I know this person. She didn't even respond to me. And now she's watching me every day. Like, don't watch me. And I had that sort of defensive attitude about it. But it's like, no, she joined me. She definitely joined me down the line. She needed time. She wasn't ready. And she didn't trust me in the space of fitness because why should she, right? So showing up on social media now, it's time to get this audience to trust you. Like 
You show up today, the next day, the next day, the next day, continue to post all the things so that someone is like, wow, she's really doing this. Wow, she's still showing up. I can't believe she's still showing up. I definitely thought she was gonna fail at this. Like that's the goal right now, right? To prove to your audience that you are dead set on making this a lifestyle for yourself and finding women to help do the same. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can do that. A lot, a lot of coaches find a couple things they can be really consistent on that your audience can expect to see every day. So a lot of people will like either mix their energize, do some personal development, post three to four workout clips. You might think like, oh, this is like, why would someone want to see this day after day after day, right? Like, don't worry about it. Don't think about that. You're showing up. You're being consistent. They might like tap, tap, tap through your workout clips because they don't care, but they're getting that impression. They're still left with that impression that you're being consistent AF. They see you 100%. They see you. Like I've had people make comments to me like, oh my God, like how do you do it every single day? Like, and I don't think that they're like, listening to see if my music transition was smooth. Probably no one noticed or saw because they've tapped through, okay? But they've noticed that I showed up and they, they do. So just keep those things in mind. Um, find something that you can be consistent about, whether it's the place you sit or, or in the morning to do your personal development, something like that, because it does leave that impression of consistency. And when someone's thinking about like who they want to join as a coach, consistent matters, I promise you. Um, and then sharing more than workouts. So, you know, I see some coaches that they post their workout clips and that's it. And it's not enough. It's not enough to keep somebody interested long term. Um, you're a little bit of a character on social media, right? Like people need to either receive value from you or be interested in what you're sharing, something. Like, guys, if um, I don't know if you saw like in our um, fitness group today, I posted like, what's your favorite at home activity, right? And a bunch of women are sharing like just great things they're doing with their kids or activities or whatever, like maybe share a list of that. Maybe pick one and showcase it on your social next week. Like give value to the people that are at home and bored and struggling, like find anything. Like I used to say that like, and I still feel that this job actually kind of made me a better mom and a better housewife because I was doing things for the gram. Like, you know, uh, okay. If yesterday I went out and I brought my kids wanted to go out and play out front, like I probably would have sat on the swing before and watched, but I'm like, eh, I'm going to set up my video on time-lapse and I'm going to get on the scooter and I'm going to do the circles and the circles and the circles and the circles. And then that's like a fun little time-lapse I can show of just like family time. Right. So the grant I'm doing it for the gram, but I'm also like really being a little bit more present in my life and finding more interesting things to do. Uh, I could eat on repeat all the time, but I try to at least choose one recipe a week so I can showcase that and be a little bit more interesting for the gram, you know? So start to think of some of those things that you want to share outside your workout clips. And if you are a super like organized person and you need to plan it out, then plan it out. Put Monday to Sunday, decide how many times a week you want to post. Honestly, if, you, if someone were to ask me what I think is the best, I would say like three to four times a week. Don't go and like count my grid. Sometimes I don't even make that. Sometimes I post more than that, but like that would be an amazing goal. And you might think like that's a lot because you're used to posting like once every two or three weeks, but that's part of stepping into this business and showing people like I'm here and I'm taking this seriously. Cause it's like post after post after post after post. And they're gonna be like, oh my God, and it's part of you taking it seriously. And do not you dare worry about how many likes you get on this picture because there are some coaches on this team that get like 30, 40 likes on a picture and are killing it in their business because people see you and they notice your consistency and they receive value from you showing up whether they like that picture or not. Um, the last couple of things about social media I guess I want to share is just being authentic. Um, if you are a perfectionist, you're going to struggle to show up enough on social media because you're wasting your time worrying about if it looks great, if it looks perfect. 
if it's better than Aaron's, if it's this, if it's that, like you need to really release that because the only way to get better is to do, is to show up and is to continue. Um, I use this example, I think every month in our coach training, but one of the coaches on this team, Jen, Jennifer Milks, um, I've known her a really long time. And when she started coaching, she started doing like live videos all the time on her Instagram. And like, I'm her coach. And I was like, I, and even me, I was like, oh my God, like, man, she is stepping out. Like she just it was like almost every day she was like all the time. And, and even some of them were like, I felt awkward because I know her really, really well. Right. And, and she wasn't being amazing at it, but she was learning and she was building that muscle. She was improving every single day. She was gaining confidence. Like six months later, I was like jealous. I'm like, wow. Like I would listen to one of her lives and be like that, like value like that great tips or you sounded confident or whatever. Like she turned herself into this sort of like personal development. Like, I don't want to say like, you know, I, I, I just feel like she started doing so much personal development and then sharing her learnings in lives that she just became such a professional at sharing that, at sharing what she was learning and really intaking the PD and doing something with it instead of just like checking it off her, her box. So um, you have to start somewhere, which is to just do. Um, and yeah, I just, I love sharing that story about Jen. Um, that's kind of it uh, for social media. I am... Um, Erin, do you have anything to add or any of the other coaches on this team? Yeah, I just wrote, like, it just goes, nobody's, nobody's first post or nobody's first story is going to be very good. And I just, I hope that you take the pressure off of trying to make it beautiful looking or really insightful or really, like, empowering. Like, it, nobody's first step is good. Honestly, like I said last week, I would take a picture of my shoes and my, and my weights. And that was, that was it. I was like, check. Um you just have to start doing and getting into the practice of doing a little bit more every day and day after day after day. It's just like a muscle. Like Courtney was saying, you build that muscle, you build your confidence, you get a little bit more creative, you're reading more. So you have more to share. Um, but it's just, it's, you just have to do. And I think that as, as your mentors in this, as, as people who've now been doing it three years, uh, my best advice is to just, take action. Because if you feel like you have no idea what you're doing, the only way you're going to learn is by doing. And if you feel like you have no confidence in this, the only way you're going to build confidence is by doing it and proving to yourself that, hey, I actually can do this. And maybe the first 10 people that you ask to work out with you are going to say no or not even respond. But guess what? At this point now, three years in, there's thousands of people who said no and not responded to me. You have to keep going because this journey is like this. The highs are amazing and the lows are really hard. But you have to keep going through the lows in order to get to the highs. And the only way you get there is by putting yourself out there a little bit more every single day and really leaning in. Like so far the chat this month has been so great. I love seeing everybody like so engaged in there. If you are unsure about something or feeling really self-conscious or you have a post and you would love some eyes on it first, drop it there. This is a safe place. This is what it's about. We are in this together. We are literally helping you to get your business off the ground. So please lean in so that we can do that. Um, what did you just say? Facebook has been good. So that's the other thing. It, uh, like I know for me and Courtney, we're mostly on Instagram, but it, that doesn't need to be the way. Think of where your people are at, where your target market is at, and be there. If your people are mostly on Facebook, be mostly on Facebook. If your people are mostly on email, then connect with them on email. If your people are mostly on Instagram, be on Instagram. But figure out where your people are and show up most there. Um, I now share everything from Instagram to Facebook on my stories. That's been really beneficial for me because there's different people on different platforms. Um, I will say in the beginning, as somebody who is like a professional and someone like I take my job really seriously, there were some people like my boss, my boss's boss, who I had on social media who really held me back for a while because I was way too embarrassed. So I said it in the chat, hide your stories from these people. 
you can do that so that they don't see your stories, but they don't know that, they, that that's the way it is. And they can see your posts, but not your stories. And for me, that was good because then I felt like I could still do my workouts and my boss and my boss's boss and my boss's boss's boss weren't watching. Um, so if there's one or two people that are really holding you back, hide your stories from them, even just until you get your feet off the ground and you're feeling more confident with it. Um, but do what you need to do to set yourself up for success because this is business is yours and nobody's going to care that much about this business as much as you do. So you've got to put the work in, you've got to show up, you've got to bring your energy and your passion because that is what is going to make you successful. So I think that's it for today. Unless anybody else has any questions or anything else to add. I would love to see in the chat, um, everyone say when your next, when your group is starting, you opened your bod group. Um, I wouldn't put an end date just as a tip um, because you might add people midway or whatever. Just leave it open. You can close at any time. But when is your next group starting? So like a, I opened my first bod group, check. My group starts on fam. And then you have like some purpose to go invite. Bye guys.